Hi everyone, it's Tom, WA2IVD. I showed you how to use the quick menu to record slow scan TV from the ISS a couple of videos ago. Today we'll take a look at playing those recordings back and decoding the images. Let's get started. When we looked at recording the ISS last time using the quick menu, we just looked at the record start feature. The recording on the IC705 is pretty full featured and there's a complete set of menus dedicated to that. If you press the menu button on the first page there is the record button here and if we touch record we have record start which is the same record start that we had from the quick menu but then we can playback files, we can set up the recorder and we can set up the player. I'm not going to go through all of these today. On the player settings there's really only one setting which is when you skip ahead how far do you want it to skip ahead and you can pick 3, 5, 10 or 30 seconds. The default is 10. We're going to just leave it there. And then for recorder there's a bunch of settings on here and again I'm going to not go through those right now. We're going to take a look at playing files. So when you record anything on the 705 it automatically creates folders with the year, month, and day. So you can see I've got files in here from a number of different days on here. And the 21st was when I was starting to record the Space, Stuttle, space Station um, slow scan recordings. So if we go in here, and I, th I think I was on one here, but I've got a whole bunch of little, you can see just a few seconds, some of these was when I was trying other things, but it shows you the length of time that the recording is, whether it was receive or transmit, uh, the time of day, the date, and it also shows you the frequency and the mode. So it gives you quite a bit of information about each recording right on the screen. And we're going to go back down here. It was the 1125. It's 2 minutes and 10 seconds. And I happen to know this was one of the um, full picture sets that I received. So if we just touch that, that takes you into the play. And you can hear it starting to play back here. Now we're not going to listen to the entire 2 minutes and 10 seconds, but uh, and this was the skip ahead, so that skips 10 seconds at a time. And if I, I am going to let this go all the way, it will automatically just keep going to the next recording. So when you hit the play, it'll just sequence through the files and sequence all of them. Now in this particular set of examples these are all receiving because I wasn't doing any transmitting. If you're actually carrying on a QSO, the default setting is to split the files between transmit and receive so the radio will actually create a separate file for transmit with the time and date and the length and mode and all the other information but it'll say TX. So if I was actually having a QSO with somebody, these would be transmit and receive files alternating, most likely. But for now, we've got the files on here. Let's look at one way that we can receive the pictures or decode the pictures with this. And we're going to just use the USB connection on the radio to do that. So let me set up the computer and we'll take a look at that. I have MMSSTV Yannick running. This is the MMSSTV is a pretty popular slow scan program. It's been around for quite a while. It hadn't been updated in quite some time and uh, another amateur has picked it up and started adding some features to it and the new version is called MMSSTV Yonic. That's Y-O-N-I-Q 
And I'll have a link in the description where you can uh, download this and go to the website and get some more information about it. But it's pretty simple to use, at least for receiving. Uh, if you click on the auto up here, it will automatically figure out the type of signal and decode it correctly, and it seems to work fine. The one thing we do need to do is make sure our audio is coming from the radio. So I have my 705 plugged into my laptop through the USB cable on the radio. So I'm using a USB input. And I'm going to go to the sound card input level. And this program doesn't have its own audio interface where you can select the audio device directly from within the program. It uses the Windows default audio device. And you'll see here the USB audio codec is checked as my default device. So that's what the program is going to use. I've got another microphone up here. That's the one that you're seeing me record on. So you can ignore that. My recording program can set that separately. So we're going to check the audio levels. I'm going to double click on the microphone. And then if you go in this pop up and go here to where it says levels, um, you can adjust the, the mic level. Now I had already adjusted this and I set it to 80%, and that seems to be pretty good for decoding and seems to be good enough for the, uh, for the program. So that's how you would change it. So we're going to click OK on this. We're going to click OK on this. And with the radio connected, I'm going to... Oops, I want that on. I am going to reach over here, and I'm going to play back that file that we just did a minute ago. There's the audio coming in. And you can see it starting to decode here. So we'll just let this finish. So there is a complete picture. Let's take a look at this in a little bit larger size here. And this is a picture received from the space station. What I think is really cool about this is this was received directly from the space station, from their transmitter to your radio, or in this case, my radio. No internet infrastructure, no cell phone infrastructure, no other, no NASA infrastructure other than the space station itself, and directly received from space. So to me, that's kind of cool because you don't have anything else helping you do this. And the signals from the space station are actually pretty good. Some of you have asked about what I used for an antenna to receive the ISS transmissions. I tried several antennas during the week. One that I tried was just a quarter wave mag mount with a few clip lead radials out on our back deck. It seemed to work just fine. Let's take a quick listen to part of a pass that I picked up on that one. Any omnidirectional antenna should work fine. The important thing is to be sure that the antenna has a clear view of the entire sky and won't be obstructed by buildings or trees. This will allow you to get better reception near the edges of the pass. You could get fancy and use a small beam to track the ISS across the entire pass. With a setup like that, you should get full quieting reception for nearly the entire pass and you'd probably get crystal clear pictures. I know I went over the record and playback functions pretty quickly. I am planning a future video to cover those functions in a little bit more detail. That's all for this time. If you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a click on the like button. If you're enjoying the channel, please consider subscribing. 
You can also click on the bell icon to be notified when new videos come out. Also, please check out a to z.tech. That's the companion website for this channel. You'll find links in the description for the website and other items discussed in today's video. As always, thanks for watching. I'm Tom, WA2IVD, and this is Ham Radio A to Z.